Hi there, um, welcome to another free video tutorial. Um, this is to help traders learn how to write their own um, algorithms and ind indicators um, through coding. So in this lesson now, we're gonna show you how to send Telegram alerts uh, from an indicator um, when there are certain trade signals. Um, the difficulty level for this video is easy. It's suitable for code beginners um, and people with very little coding experience and also people that are new for the CTrader trading platform. Now, if you are new to this um, video series that we're doing, and this is the first time you're looking at it and you haven't looked at the others, um, come to our website at clickalgo.com. Uh, when you get to the website, go under education, algorithmic courses, scroll down and make sure you um, click on all these links. Uh, at least definitely the other ones you need to do is how to install CTrader, how to install Visual Studio, um, a CTrader Automate Overview is where we do algorithmic trading um, and also a basic indicator code overview. That's very important. So it's good to look at that one. Once you've done the basics uh, for the course, look at the introduction for this course and the introduction will tell you what the course involves. Um, it's about what we're doing is actually using a relative strength index indicator. So when it's overbought or oversold, it will send an instant telegram message. So again, this is a very basic sort of um, um, uh, training session that we're going to do to help people learn how to code. And, and it's best to come here and look first. We've also got a sister site, ctrader.info. And in here, you can access all this information for your requirements. And you can also go to the school and you can actually um, answer questions. So any questions you might have regarding the code as we go along, you can put in here and we'll answer them for you. We've also got a YouTube channel at clickalgo.com. You scroll down the YouTube channel. Again, there's a section called algorithmic trading prerequisite studying. And here are all the videos that you can actually watch to help you get started. Um, and then the courses that we're going to put in here, there's going to be a lot of courses. This is the first one. So you can just click on there to get started. Okay, so that's it. That's the intro for the actual course. Now, what I'm going to do is actually show you how to set up your parameter settings for this system. Now, once you've um, watched all the videos and we've actually got this PowerPoint presentation that we showed first of all, so I won't go through it again. Um, and what I'm going to do is minimize that. Just go through the various links. Now, what I'm going to show you is um, trade signals. So each time a candle closes, if the RSI line is above the upper threshold, it will send a signal. If the RSA line is below the lower threshold, it'll also send a signal. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. Now, the parameters that we're going to cover today is what we're going to write. So ideally, this course right now, this video is going to show you how to code all of this here. Oops, I need to go back. It's going to show you how to code all of this here into your CBOT. So what we need for this project is the number of periods for the RSI indicator. Okay, that's the how many candles back or bars back the data source that we're going to use that's going to be plugged into the indicator, whether it's high, open, high, low or close prices, um, the actual upper threshold. Uh, so if the RSI line goes above, it's 70 or if the lower threshold is 30, whether you include telegram alerts or not, yes or no. And if you do, you need credentials to send a telegram message to your desktop or, or anything like that. OK, so I'll just show you um, just briefly go over this that I've probably done before anyway. You can see here that there's a bearish signal going down or a trend and the line, the RSI line dropped below the threshold, which is 30. This would have been a 30 at the bottom or whatever you choose. That's when it will say it's oversold. Let's do a buy trade. OK, again, if there's a bullish, a bullish trend, you can see here the green line of the RSI goes above the 70. You can't quite see the 70. It's on the right there. Um, again, it will send a telegram message to say sell. OK, so that's it. It's straightforward. Um, what I'm going to do now is go straight ahead and show you the parameters. Now, also, this video is going to show you how to create the CBOT. So how we go about creating the CBOT in the first place. And then the first thing we're going to do is just add the parameters. Later on in the other videos, we're going to show you how to actually connect the indicator to the data source. We're also going to show you how to use Telegram to actually send signals. So this video, first video is going to cover um, creating a new CBOT. Now, to do that, um, you need to come down the screen to where it says automate here click on the automate tab now this is where ctrader does all his algorithmic trading so you can write your um, code for the uh, cbots or indicators and where you can also run them but the indicator when we finish this indicator it won't be run from here it'll be run from your charts we'll demonstrate that at later videos so if i click on the new button and it's created a new cbot we're going to call it rsi um, telegram alerts okay i press the enter key now if you'd have watched the previous videos, it actually goes into detail and explains all of this structure here that's created when you create a new indicator. Um, so CTrader um, actually, you know, trading platform creates this for you to allow you to actually asset. So I'm not going to go into detail about what it does. So I don't confuse anybody. I'm going to go through and actually um, start adding the parameter values. 
Now it might be worth noting that this course um, is not built where we're going to provide the source code for you. So we, it, it's actually bought, you know, you're going to have to get your hands dirty. So you're going to have to learn how to code. So you're going to have to do this yourself from scratch. And again, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you where you can get free support. So if you've got any questions regarding each video that we do, you can ask the question. It has to be related to the project and not to something else that you want to do. So what we need is the parameters. Now, if you're unfamiliar what a parameter is, I'm just going to save this. That's going to save the CBOT. And I'm going to add a CBOT instance. So this is how you would actually, sorry, not CBOT, indicator instance. This is an indicator, not a CBOT. So if I click on here, it's actually got here parameters. These are your parameters. I can drag this around the screen. Um, you can actually show in hide your parameters here. If it's not, I can get rid of the trade watch bottom and I can get rid of the parameters. So click on this little icon up here and you can access parameters. Now these are your parameters for your indicator. At the moment it's got a message, hello world, and it's got green lines that are drawn. As you can see the indicator down here, the indicator is on the chart, but there's nothing there. It's not been implemented yet. So I go back to the code. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the parameters. Now for this video, I'm not going to use Microsoft Visual Studio. It's a lot easier to demonstrate this in Ctrader's code editor because it's easier to show you. So I'm going to go ahead now and replace some of these settings. So I'm going to remove that one. Now the first one, if you remember that what we needed was the period for the indicator. Now I'm actually going to copy and paste one I've done previously and then step through and explain it to you. Now, um, you can actually go to some of Ctrader's sample code and copy and paste again some of their parameter settings to make it faster to write the code. Or you could just hand write it out as you go along. But here we've just created an indicator. Here it's got a red squiggly line, sorry. That means that there's an error message because we just made some code changes. Remove this line of code completely so it will build. Okay, so the first parameter is called period. The group, and if you watched the video previously, it explains what grouping is is indicator data, and I'll show you this in a minute, and the default value is 14. Then you declare it as a public variable integer, which means uh, between one and a whatever, you can actually choose a number for it. If you need more information about what an integer, uh, they, these are called data types. Um, I won't go through it in detail right now, but I'll do it at a later date. So these are values that you can specify in code that you can use in your settings. So this data type is an integer, which is a number. Um, the, the actual name of the variable we're going to say is period and this blocker code here with curly brace get and set that just allows you to actually set the variable or get a value out of it set set what you want it to be or take out what you want later on so that's your first parameter now if I build this and actually filter it by um, RSI here RSI telegram I want to get rid of all the others so I'm going to actually just type in telegram this is a way of filtering your your indicators or C bots in this little search box so now if I click on here you can see it's got the old one still so it's got an indicator data period it's still got and that's correct yeah go back to the code we've got indicator data is the group name period is the name of the um, um, sorry setting the default value of 14 I go back to the here and you can see it's put it in there now so that's the first one and because it's an integer it's a number and you can specify up or down now if you can see we don't really want a negative value so what we're going to do we're actually going to stop negative values um, and actually going to change the code and put that as zero you can see that with a red line so I'm going back to the code now I want to add um, if you put a comma after the code error it actually shows you what you can type in so after the group name we can actually put in a maximum value so I'm going to type in max and I type in maximum value, <clears throat> sorry, max value equals, <clears throat> I'm going to do 50. Just for now, you can change it to anything you want for this. I'm going to do 100 actually. And I'm going to do min value equals, oops, I clicked on it, I didn't do it, equals zero and a comma. If you ever get the squiggly red lines, it means there's a code error. So if I take that comma out, it's got a squiggly red line. If you hover your mouse over it, it'll tell you there's a syntax error and a comma is expected. So I'm going to put a comma in there. Now if I build this and go back to the code, you can see if I go below zero, it comes up with one. And if I go above 100, it should also come up with a red warning sign. So that's a way of limiting your values. Um, if you do need them. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and add the others. So the next value I'm going to use is data source. So this is going to be the data source for the indicator. So I'm copying and pasting what I've done previously just to save time. 
So the name of the parameter is called source. The group is indicator data. So it's in the same grouping on the indicators. Data series is the type of data that you want to connect to. And the value that is called source. Now these values, source and period, I'm going to explain how to use it later on in the video. This is how you would use it in the code to actually access this information. If I was to build this now and go back to the indicator, you can see now the indicator grouping is indicator data. You've got two values in there, it's grouped together period and source and with source you can choose open high low or close prices i'll go back to the indicator again and i'm going to go now and define the upper and lower thresholds um, so what i'm going to do is actually actually i'm going to change the indicator names i've got on there but i'm going to put it across now so i'm going to put them down now i've got two two things i've just put in there now which is the rsi upper and lower threshold if you remember that I said that <clears throat> you can define the 70 and 30 so having, instead of having them just fixed at 70 and 30 you can actually change these values so I'm actually going to change this variable here because I don't like the name and it doesn't follow any standards I'm actually going to just call it upper threshold and I'm going to call this I don't like underscores in variable naming again how you name variables there's another video that we've done under the um, requirements that you before you start and it's about coding standards and um, coding conventions and how to actually name your variables so you want to start them with an uppercase here and you want to do like uppercase plus and lowercase I wouldn't put um, underscores or anything like that but this is a separate subject I can cover later now what I'm going to do is go ahead and build this um, you can see there's an error there it's come up here there's an error and you might get this while you're writing it out you might make a mistake like I've done and I don't know if you can spot the error there it's quite straightforward the gets and sets must always have curly an open curly brace and a closed curly brace there's one missing there so if I put it back in the red squiggly line disappears um, later on in the videos I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Visual Studio which has a much better debugging and error kind of managing system to tell you what you're doing but for something very basic like this for putting in um, parameters I think it's okay to use um, C trainers code editor okay so that's it I'm gonna get rid of spaces um, you want it nice and neat you want it laid out like this I'm gonna build it go here and check again now we've got indicator data period 100 source you can select you can choose your upper threshold for the indicator and you can also choose your lower threshold okay if I go back to the code again so the next thing I'm gonna do now is define the parameters for telegram alerts so what we're going to do, I'm going to copy the whole lot on there. Just copying it from a previous project that I built previously and put it here. Okay, so now I've got three new parameters. Um, you've got, I'm just going to open the space so you can see it easier. So you can choose, allow um, the user that's using this indicator to choose whether they want to send telegram alerts or not. So maybe they just want to use it as an indicator and no telegram alerts. If they select yes, then you can actually choose the bot token and chat ID. Now you need the bot token and chat ID to actually send Telegram messages. Now we've got a lot of information and video tutorials showing you how to create a Telegram bot, how to get your bot token, and also how to get your chat ID. So we've, we've definitely made it a lot easier for traders to get this information now for Telegram alerts. So now I'll just quickly go through it. So again, you've got the parameter name send Telegram. Now this is a Boolean value now, and here these are double values. So a double value, we're only gonna use integer values really. But we're going to leave it as a double so it'll allow you to put dot like 70.50 if you wanted to so down here a boolean it just means um, that it's true or false so in coding um, it's called a data type and a boolean means true or false we're going to do default to solve false and the group name is telegram notifications and again we declare it here public ball include telegram get or set which means shall i set it shall i set this variable or shall i get the value from the variable and if you go down here again, you've got string. Now string is a, a string value, which is like hello pool, you know, it's a string. And um, you can choose the bot token and the chat ID. Both of these are string values. So they're specified here as strings. So now if I build this and go to the code, now we've got all of our parameters that we're gonna use for this indicator. We haven't connected to Ctrader's relative strength index indicator yet. So we're gonna show you that in the next video. But for now, we've just defined the parameters as we showed you in the, um, the, the PowerPoint presentation that I showed you previously. Um, these are the parameters that are gonna be used um, for this indicator. 
Now, Telegram, yes or no, and then you put your bot token in there, chat ID in there, specify your threshold, you know, 35 or 80, and then what data source you want to use, the period you want to get, and you let, and as soon as you do that, your indicator will update those values at the bottom. The indicator will run, and later on, I'll show you how to actually send Telegram signals. So that's all I'm showing you on this video, is just to define your um, user values. Um, down here, you have got another one called output main. Now, this is the actual value I'll show you later that we're going to display the indicator to the chart. So in the next video, I'm going to connect to a CTrader indicator and I'm actually going to show you how to um, show that indicator on a chart, show the value being plotted on the chart. OK, so that's it. The last thing I'm going to show, you, which is quite useful, is to use a thing called regions. And this allows you to um, open or close blocks of code to make it easier to read. You can't do this with um, you can't do this with CTrader code editor. So I'm just going to quickly show it in Visual Studio just as a, a code snippet example. So I'm going to type in, actually I can't do it. Maybe I can, I doubt it. I don't think they've added it. Region, I'm going to call that um, user settings. It may have, because this is quite a new um, update of CTrader. It's using version 4.2 now. And I do hash end region. Now, yeah, you can't do it with CTrader. So what you do, I'll just quickly show you, regions are used for compressing sections. So if I was to edit this with Visual Studio, it's just a little bit extra now outside of the video for um, these, this, this uh, project, sorry, this video. So if I click edit with Visual Studio, it's now opening up Visual Studio 2022, which is really fast. Um, and I'll go through Visual Studio 2022 later on. And if you've not used Visual Studio 2022 before, um, as I said in the uh, prerequisite videos, and information it shows you how to download and install this it's a free software from microsoft it's a very good code editor and i'll explain li uh, later on why it's very useful the starters here you can see that it's actually compressed down or it's um hidden the user settings so if i click on the plus icon here you can show the user settings or you can hide them so when you're writing your code and you want to keep it nice and easy and easy to read then you can use a thing called regions for actually um expanding or and expand and whatever blocks of code so it's very useful for that and uh, again in future videos i'll show you how to debug your code and all sorts of things like that so that's with visual studio um, what you just saw there is your settings and that's it for this video so the next video i'm going to actually show you how to connect to a ctrader standard indicator which is the relative strength index indicator and how to plot that to the chart using your custom indicator one of the benefits of doing that is you could modify the indicator with a formula under the calculate and you can actually plot it any way you want in a different way. We're just going to use it for sending telegram signals. Okay, that's it. Um, before I disappear, um, come and visit us at clickalgo.com if you need any trading software or anything like that. Um, if you're stuck and you need help, just come to our um, support forum, which actually helps you out on this video that's going to come here. So I can actually, actually just going to go into the beginner video. So in here, I'm going to put the link so you can actually access and if you've got any questions about this video about adding parameter settings, just post it here and we'll do our best to answer your questions. And come and subscribe to us at clickagro.com and come and visit all our uh, various videos. Okay, that's it. Um, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up because it really helps us out in creating more videos for you. Thank you very much.